The following is a Howard Dare MGTOW production. You are watching the Howard Dare channel, bringing you daily MGTOW content. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hello MGTOW, hello men, this is Howard Dare, thanks for stopping by. I want to talk about the laws of power and leadership, but first, I want to address an issue that comes up time to time. I'm going to mention a specific issue, but I want to apply it to a whole universal group of other ideas. And the issue that comes up <clears throat> from time to time is this idea that a personal attack on someone or finding some sort of inconsistency in what the person says and what they does somehow invalidates what the person says. For example, Ayn Rand with her philosophy of individualism and objectivism, which is essentially Aristotle's idea of using our senses to assess reality, to put forth observations, and then to test them based on the evidence in reality, and then to adjust our opinions. Objectivism, you know, that, that it's based on what we can understand in the world through our senses and test and validate. You know, that, that's my understanding, and I'm sure that there's a lot of people who understand it a lot better. So, and this idea of individualism, okay, that nobody owes you anything. So important for um, being, you know, self-dependent and things like that. But then people suggest, and that's a great argument, right? These are great ideas, great principles. And then someone says, well, she received Social Security, so that invalidates her argument. How does that have anything to do with her argument? You could, what do you say? So the person is suggesting, oh, there's an inconsistency between what she said and what she did. But there isn't, because she paid into the Social Security. And she actually makes it really clear that she considers government to be a parasite, to be a leech, to be a thief. So she's taking back a little bit what was stolen from her. That's all. So there's really not even any inconsistency. And even if there was an inconsistency, it wouldn't invalidate her original points. So to those of you who are taking something back from the system, and you hear my, you know, speak, speaking about, you know, uh, how a person has to be independent and not expect anybody to owe them anything, there's no inconsistency there. You've paid into that system. This government system has taken a great deal from you. And... Perhaps you're getting a little bit back. So that, that, that's no cause for any sort of undermining of your own, um, you know, integrity of self-worth and things like that. Understand that. I would even go further and suggest that the reason why sometimes people feel that way is because they've been negatively conditioned, where the whole world has just used negative reinforcement and insults and things like that to get them to do things. And now it just kind of works right on themselves. And I say throw that shit out. Build yourself up. Take back. What is yours? What was taken from you? So there's a big difference. Uh, and I just wanted to mention that. Now, I want to read a little bit from the classic Think and Grow Rich from Napoleon Hill. But before I do, I want you to kind of uh, keep in mind that it's written a long time ago. Well, you know, some time ago, 20s, a uh, different kind of an attitude. Uh, it's written by a man who's trying to make his way in the world, so he's also got, you know, uh, a bit of an attitude different from the man today. So let's say that the man makes nine good points, okay, but he makes one or two points that are more appropriate for a gynocentric world. Does that invalidate the first nine points? No, it doesn't. Also, when we use the word, when he uses the word leadership, I want you to think of it in the sense of leading yourself. And when he uses the word followers, I want you to kind of think of it in the idea of your own feelings, like the man's feelings going against him, rather than, you know, people following you. So let me get started. Um, and as I said, you know, different time. Major attributes of leadership. The following are important factors of leadership. One, unwavering courage, based upon knowledge of self and of one's occupation. No follower, remember I'm suggested feelings, wishes to be dominated by a leader who lacks self-confidence and courage. No intelligent 
follower will be dominated by such a leader very long. Remember, I'm saying, you know, that leadership is your self-leadership. Followers are your feelings and, you know, just the ideas you might not have a whole lot of control over. Number two, self-control. The man who cannot control himself can never control others. Self-control sets a mighty example for one's followers, which the more intelligent will emulate. Number three, a keen sense of justice. Without a sense of fairness and justice, no leader can command and retain the respect of his followers. So as I said, leader unto yourself, followers your feelings. So be fair to yourself, be just to yourself, and if you're not, you will know it. And your own feelings will betray you. They will go away from you like a like like followers saying, you know, I don't really trust this guy as a leader. But, you know, also be fair to yourself. Number four, definiteness of decision. The man who wavers in his decisions shows that he is not sure of himself, cannot lead others successfully. Number five, definiteness of plans. The success the successful leader must plan his work and work his plan. A leader who moves by guesswork, without practical, definite plans, is comparable to a ship without a rudder. Sooner or later, he will land on the rocks. Number six, the habit of doing more than is paid for. One of the penalties of leadership is the necessity of willingness upon the part of the leader to do more than he requires of his followers. Number seven, a pleasing personality. No slovenly, careless person can become a successful leader. Leadership calls for respect. Follower, followers will not respect a leader who does not grade high on all the factors of a pleasing personality. This is very important. You can be really good at your job, but if you're heavy-handed, if you're short-tempered, if you're not friendly and decent to other people in general, nobody's going to want to work with you. And there might be some people out there that are really, really, you know, good that you want to work with that could teach you a lot. So be friendly, have a good attitude, don't be a sucker, don't be taken advantage of. That's my interpretation of that one. Number eight, sympathy and understanding. The successful leader must be in sympathy with his followers. Moreover, he must understand them and their problems. Now remember, I'm suggesting that leader you know, is a leader unto yourself, and followers are simply your feelings. This is about leading yourself, self-mastery. Not Don't worry about leading others. Let them worry about themselves. You worry about you. That's something that this negative conditioning takes away from a person. They stop worrying about themselves because they get insulted with things like, you know, you need to man up, you're not a real man, if you were a real man, you'd make more money. All these kinds of things that just destroy a man's self-worth and image so that when he finally gets free of that, he doesn't go to rebuild himself. He just like, you know, lays down and feels like shit. I was training a dog once. I had a great dog. All my dogs were great dogs. And uh, I was getting impatient. I was a young man. And I decided to train the dog really hard for the day because I was in a bad mood. And he's a good dog. He's a Doberman. Doberhunt. And uh, he followed every one of my commands. And when he was he was perfect. But when he came home, he was so tired. He was so he wasn't happy. He was he just laid down. He wasn't even thirsty. And I thought I'm not going to do this to him. I'm not going to treat him like shit and then force him to become this kind of machine. You know, and then take all the joy and happiness out of his life. He just wanted to lay there. And that's exactly what's fucking done to men. That's how they're treated. They're treated like a dog on a leash. And someone's pulling that leash really hard. And really often. So when the man finally gets to sit down and have a little time to himself, all he does is want to rest. He doesn't want to take care of himself. He doesn't want to build himself up. Negative reconditioning. Okay? Negative conditioning. That's what does it. It's the same damn thing that PUA, PUAs suggest that men do upon women so that he can knock the woman's confidence down so that he can appear to be knocked up a level, you know, and, and appear to have this higher sexual market value. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty ugly practice, and I suggest that it's exactly what's done to men and boys their entire lives. And if you're sitting there and you're just thinking, I don't care, let it all burn. Well, that kind of an attitude is a symptom 
of that type of treatment. So, you know, now maybe those are your legitimate feelings and maybe they happen as a response of people just using a whole bunch of negative reinforcement on you. Let's move on. Number nine, mastery of detail. Successful leadership calls for mastery of the details of the leader's position. So again, self-mastery. You ever have to do a job that you didn't want to do and every little aspect of it is really difficult and it's hard to do a good job? I have. <laughs> feel that way pretty much about almost everything. But every once in a while, if I can just stop thinking about it and just start kind of being in the moment, I'll start working on a job and I'll forget that I have to do it, that I was forced to do it, or even that I want some sort of outcome from it, and I'll rather just do the job. And I'll try to do it well. And you know what? It gets a lot easier to do it. Because I just want to, you know, I just want to get that countertop cleaned. That's all. And it ain't no big deal. And it's not that hard. And it's not going to take that long. And I really just go at it until it's done. I'm happy to do it. So that's what I'm suggesting. You know, this kind of attitude is really helpful towards getting difficult things done. So and I, I try to cultivate it, but I'm just getting started at it. So let's move on. Number 10, willingness to assume full responsibility. The successful leader must be willing to assume responsibility for the mistakes and the shortcomings of his followers. Now, I would suggest, you know, feelings, okay? So, you know, you're, you've got some feelings and you don't understand them, like maybe anger and frustration at the world and women in general. The successful leader must be willing to assume responsibility for the mistakes and shortcomings of his feelings. Earlier in the week, I did a um, video, Cognitive Therapy, with the idea that our thoughts determine our feelings. You read that sentence to say, you know, that a successful leader of oneself is willing to assume the full responsibility for the feelings that he doesn't understand, because they're coming from his thoughts. Continuing on, if he tries to shift this responsibility, he will not remain a leader. If one of his followers makes a mistake, and shows himself incompetent, the leader must consider that it is he who failed. Now, again, I don't think we should take this on for other people, because women are idiots, and they're going to fail nonstop. They're going to destroy the civilization if we let them, or if they continue to be able to, you know, secure power in this way. But if your feelings are going out of control, it's you and your thoughts that are responsible. And you can't say, you know, oh, I was all angry, so I did something stupid. No. You were thinking a bunch of stupid ideas, then your feelings got all out of control, and then you did something really stupid. And I say you, but, but I mean me. Okay, moving on. Number 11, cooperation. The successful leader must understand and apply the principles of cooperative effort and be able to induce his followers to do the same. Leadership calls for power, and power calls for cooperation. Keeping this on the internal level, you can't force your feelings. You need the cooperation of your feelings. Sometimes you're feeling left out, a little unsure. And as a man, you want to say to yourself, cut it out, don't feel that way anymore, be a man, shut up. And then you just walk forward, but you still feel the exact same way. But you just now, you've just got a voice in your head saying, don't feel that way. So maybe a better way to deal with this, and you know, I'm still learning these things for myself, you know, would be to say, okay, I feel this way. Why do I feel this way? Being honest with yourself and then saying, okay, that's that's understandable. You know what I mean? I'm coming up here for a difficult job, and I'm uh, not 100% sure in my ability or the outcome. A lot hangs on it. Prepared as best as I can, but I still don't know. A little bit of nervousness is, is natural. A little bit of doubt is natural. But as, you know, these earlier principles suggested, you don't need to doubt yourself. You can rely on your earlier skills and abilities that you've proven to yourself. So... Master yourself first, and your feelings, and your thoughts, and your jobs, and, you know, the things that you want to do. Not your responsibilities. Fuck that. But the things that you've chosen to do, that you've decided to do. And if you're roped into one of these situations where you started out, you know, wanting to do this good, noble thing, and now it's turned into this kind of nightmare of people manipulating you, and it makes you crazy, and it drives your feelings through the roof... Take responsibility for those feelings. You know, understand that you're in a difficult situation. You know it. You can't deny it to yourself. And uh, if you can take some positive steps towards understanding a situation that you're in 
and taking some steps towards resolving it, I think that can make a person feel a lot better. Because I understand that you can't just change your situation, lift yourself out of your situation, and you feel really bad about a situation. Like maybe you're not in good shape, maybe you want to improve your financial situation, maybe you want to get out of some abusive relationships, but you can't just snap your fingers and do it. I understand. So you feel like, you know, you feel terrible. But you can, within your own mind, acknowledge the situation and you can start taking some small steps. You can say, I, you know, I see it, I see where I'm responsible. And then you can start taking some small steps of building yourself up, of rejecting the negative conditioning. And that's the path, you know, so build yourselves up, take responsibility for your feelings, the cognitive therapy. I'm going to leave it at that for now. I am not a professional psychologist. If I were, I would understand myself a lot better. But let me know what you think about the subject in the comment section below. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Join me again, Howard Dare, as I hope to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.